Okay, we are live. Yay. Hello, everyone. My name is Stacey Nell. I'm the executive director of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Uh, we are a little, well, no, we're not late because I knew we were going to start at 12. So we're, we're right on time. Uh, because I wanted to make sure to accommodate my guest today. And I want to say hello and thank you and welcome Miss Carolyn Wims Campbell. How are you today? I'm just great. Thank you. Good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I am thrilled to have you on the Lunch and Learn today to be able to talk to you. You are an uh, uh, icon, a fixture. Um, um, I jokingly say, you know, where all the bodies are buried <laughs> of, of the Kansas legislature. And I wanted to just share a little bit of your story with with the, with our with our um, people who listen to this podcast. So let me read your bio first. Carolyn Wims Campbell has been a staple in the Kansas legislature for over three decades. After ending her nearly 30 year career at Southwestern Bell, she began her work in the Capitol in Senator Bill Brady's office and continued assisting legislators in both the Senate and the House until 2004, when she became the executive assistant to the Senate minority leader. In 2008, she became the first African-American person elected to the State Board of Education, where she served two four-year terms. She was elected to three four-year terms on the Topeka Public Schools Board of Education. She has also served as regional director for the Kansas Association of School Boards on the executive board of the Kansas State High School Activities Association, that's a mouthful, and as president of the National Federation of Urban and Suburban School Districts. She's an active steward, missionary, and lay person at her church, historic St. Mark's AME in Topeka, and she has served two terms as president of the Kansas-Nebraska Conference Lay Organization. She's the proud mother of her daughter, Erica, who lives in Arlington, Virginia. So thank you so much for coming today and joining us. Um, the first question I ask everybody all the time is, what are you having for lunch? I'm going to have some leftover chili that I made last week. <laughs> And I'm getting rid of it today. <laughs> I, you know what? Today and today is a good day to, to have chili, quite frankly. I guess so. The weather has changed. Already. It is not, yeah. It is not nice outside. Um, so I wanted to start this conversation. I know that your faith is very important to you. Like I know you talk lovingly all the time about historic St. Mark's AME. And I and I um I confess I cheated and watched a very lengthy interview of you uh yesterday. <laughs> that you did for like the Kansas Historical Society or something like that. And so I'm like, I know I, I, I just I'm going to steal some of those questions. So how did your upbringing in the AME church shape shape who you are as a person and your decisions about what what you went into and, and, and your life? How's it rolled out? Well, I am a fourth generation AME. So uh, it's like this. I probably didn't have any choice once I, my mama took me to and father. Well, before he passed, took me to church. And mama said um, they had to stop me because I enjoyed the music and I was trying to dance. <laughs> and, you know, Methodists, we're sort of considered reserved. Oh. Uh, used to be. Yeah. I think um, a lot of hymns and everything. But anyway, so my life, I've always been in church. And I, my memories go back to as a little girl in, at our church over in the corner we had a sandbox and I can even remember playing in that. And then as you, I got older, um, the wonderful thing about being at AME, I don't feel like, is that they teach us <clears throat> and we grow. And so in the Sunday school, um, there was a secretary and a treasurer and that was uh, the children, it was us. So I had started serving as a, you know, a secretary I don't know if I ever was treasure, but anyway, um, in Sunday school started on time. Our superintendent started us right at uh, 9.30. And uh, one of my proud things is uh, as I grew and older and graduated to different things, I served as our superintendent for 17 years. In the church? Uh, at St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. So I love children. And so um, that definitely I, carried over into your adult life. Yes. And so um, it was just funny because a lot of times uh, um, I would have to be teaching different classes and I pretty much love the beginners 
And that's the young ones because they're so sweet and innocent. <laughs> and not that the high school ones aren't, but then they can challenge you. But anyway, to get back to my church and my faith, um, I'm one of those that I say I didn't have sense enough to say no sometime. And so when I was asked to do something, I said yes. And uh, so, and that, but that's how you grow. Yeah. And I try to tell young people now that what you need to do, if someone says that they uh, think that you should be able to do this, try. They see something in you that maybe um, I didn't see in myself. And that's the way it was with me a lot of times. And um, so um, I love the Lord and I love my church. And so I've just I've been very active in whatever um, I'm asked to do. You know, it's funny you talk about uh, if people ask you to do something, say yes. I gotta tell you, that's how I wound up here. <laughs> I had a couple. I had a couple people say, "Hey, you should," and I said, I said well, "Okay, all right." And then they say, "What about this?" And I'd be like, "Okay, all right." Mm-hmm. So, that's right. You never know where it's gonna lead you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now how how did you? I know you worked for Southwestern Bell. And I'm cheating because I know I know the answer to this question, but I'm gonna leave space for you to tell. Okay. <laughs> I know you work for Southwestern Bell. How did you make the transition from Southwestern Bell to working in in the area of politics to working in the state house? Okay, good question because I have always been focused on church. Always. Well, when I retired uh, years ago, there was a, a program, and I was in charge of it with Southwestern Bell, where we contacted our retired employees. And I, one of the retired employees was Mr. Emo Lutz, who is the uh, legislative service director now, that Mr. Day, but anyway. Um, and so when I called him just to see how he was doing, if he had any concerns, he told me, he said, well, Carolyn, you're young now. He says, but when you retire from a phone company, I want you to apply and come work here. Now I have to go back to tell you that the benefit office, there was five states uh, and Pika or Kansas, ours was the best functioning state in the benefit office. For Southwestern so Bell. And Southwestern Bell. So yeah. guess which one they shut down first. It wasn't Nebraska, was it? <laughs> it was Kansas. <laughs> so all of a sudden uh, uh, the a gentleman from St. Louis came to talk to us and explain taking an early buyout or just, you know, what, if I wanted to transfer to another state, I could. And jokingly, I told him, I said, if um, I'll come and work in St. Louis, if I can, there was the Majestic Hotel in St. Louis. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's Mm -hmm. nice, it's nice and had good food. (laughs) I said, Y'all can put me up in the Majestic and I can walk right across the street to to work, jokingly knowing that it wouldn't be. So I retired early and so I called. You have to ask, though. I got to say, you you always have to ask because they may have done it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Money, money, money. Uh, And that was the other thing. When I started, it was um, it was Mall Bell and Zane Barnes was the president and they cared about their employees. Yeah. And as the things changed and the head vice president or whatever that title was, they started promoting young people. You could just see things shifting to not so much about caring about the employees' money. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I started, that was in December. I was had to be Retirement was effective December 31st of 91. And in January, the second Monday in January, I started to work here. And I love, I love it. I enjoy it. And the first senator I worked for was Senator Bill Brady. And um, I worked in the, I worked all these years in the Senate, except for two. And those, that was in the House of Representatives. And that was a situation that you probably don't want me to to talk. It was sort of negative. How bad? Well, I mean, I think I think your background working with children probably is helpful in dealing with (laughs) (laughs) dealing with the Kansas. Did I say that out loud? No, no. no. 
And but I tell you the one thing that I have, and I say this that I I don't want to ever act or do something that would put, they'd say, well, that's Ciola and Floyd's daughter acting that way. Mm -hmm. So I have always always been one to try to be respectful and kind and considerate to people. And even those that I don't care for <laughs> that have irritated me. Um, I still give them the respect that yeah. that I th that they do, you should give them. I mean, it's, it's it's a quality. I mean, it's a quality that I know I recognize in you. I mean, <laughs> and I think, and more important. Well, I don't know if it's more importantly, but just as importantly, I think because you show people respect, you com command respect, right? Like, I think you give back what you put out, and because you show people respect, I think people are uh, in in kind. Um, Show you. I, I hope so. And it's just, I have said this before that I would never work for anyone that I could not respect. And that happened in 2004 when uh, there was a situation and uh, the gentleman who was in charge, he told me, he says, Carolyn, I can place you in um a Republican office, and I said, "No, you can't. I'll go home." And I, you know, but no, I, I've got to have the same folks I work for care about the same things as I do, and that's education and children. So I was gonna say, so you took this. You, you, you've always, since you were young, loved children. And, and you've always worked in politics. So you sort of married those two together, eventually becoming an elected official. And I know it was first with the local school, the Topeka School Board. So tell us about how you decided to make that run. That's, let me tell you, my daughter, um, and I'll say she's 50 this year, but she was about 18 months and Kay Meadows was the one that represents the area where we live. Kay Meadows lived like two blocks from me. So she called me and she said she did not want to run again. And would I, she wanted me to run in her district. And I said, no, I couldn't do because Erica was young. And then I had a mother uh, that was had health issues and I just couldn't focus on it. Right. Then a few years later, I was going to a visitation and a lady, uh, well, her name is Barbara Davis. Um, she was an educator and she stopped me on the steps of the mortuary and said that I needed to, they'd been talking, I needed to run for office. And I said, no, mm -mm. And uh, what happened was here at the Capitol, the lobbyist for Topeka Public Schools was Mr. Onan Burnett. I love him. I love the memory of him. And he, said that I needed to run for local school board. And I kept saying, no, and I, I gave him names of different people to ask. And so the Monday that, or the Tuesday, I think, maybe, that they, um, um, oops, I'm sorry, um, when um, the deadline. The filing deadline? <laughs> he came into the office at 11.30, the deadline was 12 o'clock. I was going to say, you're cutting it close. And he said, they couldn't find no one. You're it. So he took me out there. He paid the $5 fee. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it, it all started my being in. And you won. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I had. You dragged your feet and said, no, no, no. And then you slipped and fell and won. <laughs> and what happened was. Part of the people, people that knew me, I guess, and knew, you know, who I was and what I believe in, but the special education parents, there was a group of them, and they took my flyer, and it, and it was just a printed sheet of paper at the time. It wasn't nothing really sophisticated, and they they took it to nursing homes and slid them under the apartments and slid them in the door. So but it had all my information. So um, 
Miss Betty Hunt, that's the lady that really uh, orchestrated and helped me. Truly a, a grassroots <laughs> campaign. Mm -hmm. And I told them at the time, I said, I will always do what I think is best for the kids. And I might not be able, and I don't, you know, maybe help to do both the way you want. But, and, and she, and when years, and we're still friends, and she said she could all tell people that I couldn't do everything that they wanted, yeah. but I sure tried. And so I hear you. Uh, now there's a story, there's a story that, I, that I'm aware of that I wanted you to share. So uh, it's it's the naming of four schools here in Topeka. I wonder how many people even know this. So so tell about the naming of the schools. Well, what happened was <laughs> what happened? I, what had happened? I was just um I was a new board member. And that year we were it was July, we we're getting ready to um elect new officers and there were two gentlemen on, already on the board they'd been there a long time and they both wanted to be president so as my little friend at church would say they were sucking up to me <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said one time when i complimented her on something she did i'm good at sucking up miss campbell she said Ooh, sucking was, up i'm gonna have to use that i'm gonna have to um, people are if they're sucking up gotcha. so, so they were trying so it's so silly. People can be so silly. So they um, they let me, and we received letters asking for a lot of different people. There was a pediatrician um, that was very much loved and respected, and he that name received a lot of letters. My thought was we, um, that the, that is clinic name. Their clinic changed the name to that. So, but anyway. Um, um, so what happened was um, they they uh, made a motion that I could name the schools. And so this is how I did it. And so uh, I named, um, well, I'll start out with Williams Magnet because Miss Mamie Williams, uh, her house is at 15, 1501 Quincy, just down the street. And uh, her sister was my principal uh, at McKinley Elementary. And of course, I always say I am a proud product of segregation. That uh, um, I, I just, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm one that went from kindergarten to sixth through sixth grade with all black teachers. But uh, so, but anyway, Miss Mamie uh, Williams and her, I never did really know her, but her, message to her children is be a miracle. And I just think that's wonderful that we would want all of our children to be a miracle Amen. and encourage them to be that. And so then I met Scott Magnet was named after um, the attorneys around the board. That was Charles and John Scott that worked on that hit. Their father uh, was not involved in that, but it was Elijah. Scott, and he was an attorney too. All of them graduated from Washburn University. And then Meadows, uh, after K Meadows, and in my little mind, I had that, that this should be for all the black mothers that had to sh struggle to support and get their children uh, supported in, in school. And uh, Catherine Carper, who at 10, she was the youngest one that she was the only child that it was uh, testified with at the Capitol, I mean, the courthouse here at Fifth and uh, um, Kansas. Um, she was only 10 years old. Wow. But she talked about her mother, where they lived, and how far she would have to walk, like if it was rain, the mud, and the snow, mm -hmm. and everything. Her mother would walk her to a certain place where she could catch a, a bus. Wow. But, but, I, but for me, that was for all the all the mothers that struggled yeah. to make sure their babies um, were valued. That's the one thing I want to always say that every day that we walked into school at McKinley, we were valued. There was high expectations. They knew, we they instilled in us that we could be whatever we wanted. So the people that you named the schools after, did they were they 
alive. I mean, like you said, Williams, um, she had already passed. But as, well, uh, as well as this, uh, Scott's, uh, uh, Charles Scott was, uh, John Scott died a long time, but even Charles Scott, but, but I got to know him well. He was a nice man, <laughs> um, fun to be around. I, I mean, I just love it because I think, you know, I hear names of schools and I never think about who they're named after sometimes. And so when I heard that story, I was like, OK, I want this story to be. And so I came, her children, her daughters and they're one of them. And I can't say her name right now, but she's uh, in education. But um, so her, her children know and are proud and they, you know, they thanked me at the time for you know, honoring their mother, but but see, um, again, Kay was from North Topeka, and uh, I've know I had known her all my life anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, man, this 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 half hour is speeding, and I'm like, I need to. We need to definitely talk about the fact that you were elected to the Kansas Board of Education, but then I also need to make sure I leave time to talk about how you were integral in the starting of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, which is who I'm the ED of now. So do how did you make the leap? Because I know you're you know you're you're working well at the Topeka School Board level. How what made you decide to go to the Kansas State Board of Education level? I was sitting here right at this desk <laughs> and um, a recruiter came in one day and said, Carolyn, you've been identified as someone to run for the state school board. And <laughs> And, and as mischievous as I can be, I had always thought they need somebody black over there. <laughs> they need some some color over there. I'd always thought that, but I thought, oh no, <laughs> you know, I, I <laughs> you're the one answer. you were waiting for. You're the answer to the prayer. <laughs> yeah, and so um, I told the, the gentleman, and uh, that well, I'd have to think about this. And the first thing I did was ask Senator Hensley, because uh, I value him and love him. And I knew that I basically knew he was going to say yes. But but still, I needed to just you know, verify with him. And he said yes. And uh, he helped me. And Bill Brady, the first senator, he was my campaign manager. And so if it hadn't have been for Bill Brady, and because uh, no Topeka Public Schools, Topeka knew me, but the other areas right. didn't really know me. And so to have to try to get my name out and um, Douglas County all elected me both times. I got more um, votes there than ever in, in Shawnee County. Um, I love anyway. it. That's I love it. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, it's funny. That was not that long ago. That was 2008, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's recent. Mm -hmm. That's recent. So thank mm -hmm. you for your recent service. We're not talking about something, you know, a long time ago. But then I did, I do want to go back to 1997 and the founding of the African American Affairs Commission. Because I know that you were involved uh, with that. Yes. So we could take, definitely take a couple minutes and, oh, look, she's got pictures. <laughs> I tell you, I'm very proud of what happened, and and I want to, uh, uh, Clyde Howard, the brother, there, uh, at Arch again, St. Mark's. We are follow. We have follow, follow, followed in the uh, line of Richard Allen, the founder of the AME Church, that we're concerned about education and civil rights. And you know, we, it's been said that um, the AME Church was the first, say, boycott or whatever, civil rights. But anyway, um, so Clyde Howard, he was a state employee at the time. But we started having meetings at historic St. Mark's Church, 801 Northwest Harrison, um, and the, with the community to uh, try to get this. Now, Again, I was working for, it took a while. I was working for Senator Brady at the time. And uh, he, um, there was a, um, 
Hispanic caucus, mm -hmm. there was not a African American caucus. Yeah, there was the, the, the Hispanic and Latino American Affairs Commission had been around since I think the 1970s. I think mm -hmm. it had been there. And so I remember a conversation with Senator Brady. He says, uh, Well, Carolyn, um, why can't you all just be a part of that? And I said, No, because we have different issues. And so we need our own. And so um, there was, it took a while to get a committee because the committee chair, which I have, can't remember now, was very anti the bill. And so it took a good while. And so what happened was um, Clive said I needed to testify. So I have actually testified once in um, a committee and we, um, um, what I want to say, I said, well, upstairs here at Legislative Services, they said I couldn't do it because I was an employee. And I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. I, well, I'm going to give up my rights as a right. citizen. And so what Senator Brady told me, he says, if you go ahead and testify, if anyone says anything to you, you just tell them you were on your lunch hour. <coughs> lunch hour. <coughs> Excuse me. So we we did that, and finally it was passed. And the lady is more Dean Taylor Archer. She is. I, I have a hard time with this. Don't it's yeah, because it's reversed. It's like uh -huh, and, okay. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know what's um, left and right on the screen. <laughs> so she was the first executive director. Uh, there, and so I'm happy to say that there was times when I, when it was a flourishing uh, office where you had a lot of employees, you had an assistant, and then you had volunteers like me. I would, you know, would volunteer from time to time whenever they needed something, and and in hmm, about 2004, I'd have to look at home. Um, I was asked to, and I coordinated statewide voter registration. And I love that because we, I think we registered over 2,000 and some odd votes. And I had people in Hayes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, doing, um, doing, and getting, having sessions to get people registered. And I've, so I've made people cry. <laughs> I'm proud of that. That's how messy I can be at times. <laughs> I was out, it was like a Juneteenth out here in Topeka and this couple came up to, to, to the table because it's always freebies. If I can do something, I try to have a hand. Right, right. And so the young man, he said he was not registered. And uh, so he took a, a form to fill out and she didn't. And I got irritated. <laughs> so I told her about all the people that had to count the jelly beans, all the people that died for the right to vote. And I said, and you can't even take the time to fill this form out. I said, I don't, maybe, I don't care if you don't go vote. I mean, I really want you to, but you could at least be registered so if you decide. And she started boohooing. <laughs> she said, I felt so good. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I love you. This, is why, this, this is why I like you. This is why I like you. But no, that's the thing I always say. I've always said too many people died for my right to vote. Yes, they did. I just fully, I, I, I am, like, that's a part of who I am as a person to know that my life looks the way it does because of so many countless uh, names lost to history people fought for me to have the right to vote so okay would you our half an hour is up which it, i knew was going to fly by i and this makes me so sad but i also wanted to leave some time because i do want about this voting issue there are a lot of bills going through the kansas legislature right now that are seeking to very strongly limit the rights to vote and make it um more difficult to vote, make it harder to vote. And so I wanted, I'm gonna start ending all my, my lunch and learns with this press to please make sure you are registered to vote. My guess is if a person's watching this lunch and learn, they're, a, they're politically aware to the point that they're paying attention. So ask your friends if they're registered to vote. 
ask your, your spouse, your significant other, ask your neighbor if they're registered to vote and make sure that, that we get registered to vote. Our community oftentimes is not adequately represented, re represented by the people who are elected. I mean, just like Ms. Carolyn, you said that you ran for state's board of education because you're like, they need, they need a black person up in there. Um, and I think nearly every level, well, I don't think, I know every level of government would benefit by having a more diverse selection of people, more mm -hmm. black people, more brown people, more young people. Um, it would be very helpful. So continue everyone to make sure that you're registered to vote. And I will, con be con I will continue to talk about this until the next election cycle and beyond. So yeah, good. But I, want, I wanted to thank you so much, uh, Ms. Carolyn, for coming on today. It has been a pleasure to talk to you and to, to get your story out there, uh, even as briefly as it is. And um, I'm sure I will see you in the Capitol building. Thanks, everybody. Is there anything else you wanted to say, Ms. Ms. Campbell? No, just that, like you said, but one thing is I tell people, Sometimes if you move, you need to re-register. Yes. And uh, I'm proud to say that at my church, we're all registered to vote. We, and we do that every year. We do a, a, a re, re, review. And sure. I found a lot of people that didn't understand that, oh, I have moved. Well, you know, you need to re-register. Definitely. Because it, it's, it's up in the air about how they're going to deal with uh, voter rolls. Mm -hmm. That if, if a person doesn't vote in every election, you run the risk of being taken off the voter rolls. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, sometimes that's just life, right? Like um, you've got, I know at one point I had two babies under the age of, like there was one who had just gotten born and one that was one. And so if you're, if you're, if you've got, if you're thick into diapers or if you're taking care of somebody, an election may sneak past you, but if you miss too many elections, they'll take you off the rolls, which would be mm -hmm. bad. So, all right. Well, thank you, Ms. Campbell. I, I do you. appreciate it. All right, everybody. And I will see you next Monday. Okay.